Warning, the following episode of Blackwell Podcast contains spoilers for all episodes of Life is Strange. everyone, welcome to Blackwell Podcast, where we love Life is Strange more than Rachel wants to get away from Blackwell for the day. I'm Joey. Uh, with me, as always, have Jamie. Hello. Have Aaron. Heyo. Sean. Hey. And Zach. Heyo. If that's not all, folks, today we have a very special guest. Uh, none other than the voice of Rachel Amber, Kylie Brown herself. Hey, Kylie. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys? Doing great. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty damn fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is really exciting. We're uh, super glad to have you with us today. Um, did a fantastic job as Rachel, Aww. and try not to spend the whole episode gushing about it, <laughs> so that you can speak. And, uh, <laughs> little bursts here and there. It'll be good. <laughs> it's okay. We can just talk about it the whole time. I'm full. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, to get started with, uh, we know you're the lovely voice of Rachel Amber. But uh, who who are you? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start with the hardest question. Who am I? Um, <laughs> I am Kylie Brown. That is who I am, and I, oh gosh, I love acting. That is like my one true passion. Me too. I, yay! <laughs> I've played soccer my entire life since I was four years old, made varsity when I was a freshman. Um, Just, yeah, I'm such a sports girl, but then also an arts girl. I love to sing. I love singing. Um, (laughs) What what is life? Honestly, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) You're you're kind of, you could, you could say that. Life, Life, my life is very strange. (laughs) <laughs> TM kind of, a, kind of a Rachel IRL then. Just yes. all around So uh, what got oh, you and interested? I just moved Oh Yeah all I right. just moved. Yeah I'm, I'm finally in LA oh, I was nice. literally, Oh sweet I just Where were you before? What's that? Oh sorry Where were you uh, before that? Um You I don't know if you guys will know. I'm still in California. I, I grew up in California, but um, so I'm a Cali girl, just like Rachel. Um, <laughs> I I grew up in Lake Arrowhead. It's uh, like the San Bernardino Mountains, if you know Big Bear. Um, so I'm a mountain girl, but I just moved out to LA literally yesterday. I finished unpacking last night, so it's oh, wow. amazing. I'll give you a tour of my room. Uh, there's a wall, and on the other side, there's another wall. Uh, I'm on my bed. And there is a closet. There you go. It's the whole tour. Do you know it's really weird? Our rooms are like almost identical. Like, I also really? have all of those things. <laughs> that is so cool. That's like that's amazing. We're so in sync. I know. We have everything in common so far. Seriously, it's crazy. You guys have fancy two wall apartments. Jesus. <laughs> I know. They're the best though, honestly. <laughs> Actually, you want to know the best part about my room? What's the best part? I have an AC. Oh, oh that is nice. <laughs> Damn, I don't know how many AC. I have a window that doesn't open properly. Uh, that work. That's that's what I have too. But AC is there, so. <laughs> 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 um. Okay. So your next question. Sorry. Um. How did I? Or what interested me in becoming an actress? Yeah. What, what got you started in that? Oh, it's such a cheesy story. Okay. So, when I was younger, do you guys have you guys ever watched the um, the movie Aragon? Yeah. I, I, know yes. I have not seen it. 
But... Oh my god. Okay, so I watched it in theaters with my mom and my sister, and I literally left that theater with my heart throbbing, and I didn't know why. And then all of a sudden it clicked, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do what they're doing. I want to be on that screen, but I never knew how. I didn't know how to go about it. I mean, I'm in Lake Arrowhead. I'm in this small mountain town. <laughs> and um, one day... Actually, I owe it all to my sister's ex-boyfriend, if I'm going to be very specific. So my sister got... I'm sorry, Kimber, if you ever listen to this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so my sister's ex-boyfriend uh, broke up with her the day before winter formal um, in high school. So my mom, my sister, and I, we all went to the, um, our, the nearest mall, which is like an hour away. Uh, it was like this outdoor outlet mall kind of a thing and her and I got dressed up it was a girls night we had heels on we were walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden this woman came up to us and she introduced herself as a talent scout so she told us to go to this audition the next day for this academy and so we went we made it in and we got known as like the brown sisters and um because we were both talented I did the singing the acting she did the acting and the dancing so together we were just like amazing <laughs> and um <laughs> Then true, we, true. we auditioned for the showcase, and the showcase was held at the Biltmore. So it's the, um, uh, oh my gosh, it's IPASS, International Performing Arts Academy. Yeah, Academy. And then we auditioned for IPASS, which is International Performing Arts Showcase. And that was held at the Biltmore, and that's where my manager found me. And my manager originally did not um, work with any minors. And I was 14 at the time. <laughs> so I was like, well, I can't, I can't impress you. And um, <laughs> apparently I did. And he pulled me back. And uh, I've been working with him ever since. And he's just amazing. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's what wanted, wanted me to make. That's what interested in me, me becoming an actress was Aragon the movie. It's <laughs> <laughs> a hell of a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just started uh, my acting course at university. Like, I'm in my first term. Uh, so that's, like, uh, really cool to hear. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> have you uh, have you gotten to work with any dragons yet? Dragons? Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Only all the you time. Know. <laughs> I have, like, stuffed animals at home that I play with, and they're dragons. <laughs> that's, that's close enough. <laughs> Alrighty, so our next question is, how did you get involved with Before the Storm? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so, it was just a series of, event, of events. So, I originally got the audition, and I never had any sides. Like, I never got the script before for the audition, and so I was like, okay, well, it might just be a cold read. And I've never done voiceover work before, and this is my first voiceover audition. So I walked in, and um, the guy who was auditioning me, he walks out, his name's Phil, and he goes, and he's the voice director too, one of them, and uh, he comes out, and he's like, hey, so like, uh, are you familiar with the sides yet? Or, um, and I'm like, uh, I didn't get any sides. And he was like, oh, that's okay, you, you can have mine, and just go back out in the, in the waiting room and just, you know, get familiar with them and come back in. So I was like, okay, cool. And then so I did that, I walked back in, and all I saw was this microphone. So, like, I'm used to having, like, a camera and, like, two or three people behind the, um, behind the desk, like, watching me act and mm -hmm. being, like, a reader. And so this was all new to me. I was like, oh, so do I just, like, talk into the microphone? And he's like, yeah, and you can, like, just read sides right there. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. This is, like, my new favorite <laughs> auditioning thing. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well, I wasn't prepared, so I'm not going to get this. Little did I know, I get a call back. And then it was raining the day of the callback, and like I said before, I lived two hours away, and because there was rain, I left three hours before just so I would get there on time. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I got there an hour early, which was perfect. I found what the place where I was going to be doing the callback was this nice little studio. So then I had an hour. I went to go find a coffee shop, and it was like, I mean, like two or three blocks down the road. And uh, <clears throat> I... I went over my sides while I was there. I was drinking my espresso, you know, doing doing the girl stuff. And then <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes before, I, like, go back out to my car, and I put everything in my car, and I realized, like, the hood of my car is uh, open. So I was like, okay, that's weird, and I shouldn't be driving like that. So then I close my door, go to the hood of the car, and I realize 
my door just locked. Oh, no. I'm locked out. I I don't have my keys, my phone, my sides, my wallet, anything. I don't have anything. And I'm like, my audition's in five minutes. What are we going to do? So I'm running in the rain down three blocks to the studio. I walk into the studio, and I'm soaking wet with nothing. And I find the place where I'm going to be doing the callback. And Phil looks at me, and he was like, do you have your sides? I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like, everything got locked in my car. I'm not prepared. Well, I was prepared. I pretty much had it memorized. But I was like, I just don't have anything. So I sat down, and they were doing, like, chemistry reads. And um, I just felt like, you know what? Nothing could go more wrong in this day. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it went really well, though, the, the callback. But I really did not think I was going to get it. And um, maybe a week a week and a half later, my manager calls me, and we're talking, and I'm like, yeah, things are just feeling slow, you know, and he's like, yeah, but, I mean, at least you got, uh, well, at, at the time, it was actually, everything was under code names, mm-hmm. so I didn't, I didn't even know what I was, I didn't know the real thing that I was auditioning for at the time, oh, right. and so, yeah. yeah, so he was like, well, at least you got, um, I don't know if I should be saying the code name, so I'll just call it Mike, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a code name got, for a code name. Yes, it's a code name for a code name. Um, so I was like, at least you got Mike. And I was like, wait, 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 what? And he's like, yeah, you got Mike in the other film that you auditioned for. I was like, oh my god, what? So then that's how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least so it had a, cool. uh, a good ending. Cool. That would have been... Miserable. I know. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Um. So before before you were auditioning for uh, Codename Mike, uh, <laughs> had you like had any? Did you know about Life is Strange at all? You know, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I did not, but I'm so thankful that I did book it because then I did all my homework and I played the games and now I'm like a forever fr- fan of this franchise like it is the most amazing and sincere game like ever <laughs> so I am now a fan a huge fan a lifetime fan that's what awesome. I like to hear <laughs> <laughs> got our seal of approval yeah. um so this next one, I, sorry, I have to say, I love, like, how every answer has a story, you know, like, because, like, some interviews are just sort of like, yeah, this is what happened, and, you know, this is how I got into acting, and here I am. But these, like, are so involved, and I can actually, like, I feel like I'm there, like, going through all the motions and getting locked out of your car, so it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing in the rain, locked yeah. outside of your car, looking at your phone, blowing up for, right. like, different things, yeah, <laughs> it was great. Yeah, How did you end up getting back into the car? Like, oh, after that, yeah, after after my callback, I uh, walked back to the place, hoping my car wasn't towed, and I called AAA, hung out for about forty five minutes. They uh, did a simple little thing and unlocked my door, and I was like, I wish I could have done that, and I was on my way. <laughs> yeah, like they basically just like, I had I locked my car out. It was like three o'clock in the morning. I locked my keys out. I was getting gas, and uh, so I had to call. I had to call. Uh, someone to come out and open it and all i did was like stick this little foam wedge in the door and then like yeah. basically it's a coat hanger and i was like are you kidding me like i have to pay you <laughs> money I for what you just that. did yeah like, seriously it's so easy for them and i'm just like well if i had the tools i could have done that too right <laughs> but instead i'm standing in the rain so that's that's chill <laughs> it's poetic it is poetic um, <laughs> it's a, you could write a Taylor Swift song. Um, <laughs> AAA guy is my ex boyfriend. I'm just going to sing about him. <laughs> to uh, any of our resident music makers, you have your work cut out for you. Yes, please do that. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that uh, um, voice acting was something that you weren't used to before. So compared to acting on screen, um, was it a big change recording lines in a booth as opposed to, uh, you know, being present on camera or on stage or anything like that? Oh, it was so different, and I loved it. So when I <laughs> – another story. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I first walked into the studio and I walked into the booth – well, first when I walked into the studio, there was, like, this 
huge like desk full of different buttons and like little slidey things and I'm like I don't know what anything is right here like how do you know and like they knew every single button I was like wow that's awesome and so I walked into the booth and there was the microphone and headphones and the first day I was I was in the booth with Rihanna so I like kind of looked at her because I was like I wonder if she's done this before because like do I do I put the headphones on do, do I not put the headphones on <laughs> do I do what do I do where do I stand like I was just I was just I didn't tell them that I didn't know what I was doing but I didn't know what I was doing and um so then we first started going into it and Phil told me so we're just gonna do you know the basics you're gonna do an A and a B when I when you read the line just say it twice in the same recording but different ways so I was like okay cool so then I got the hang of it after, like, an hour. But, um, yeah, it's totally different because then I don't have to worry about what I'm wearing, what I look like. I don't have to wear makeup. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge thing for me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> walk into the booth, and it's so intimate because there's no camera in your face. There's not, like, 50 people around you, like, watching you. And just – it's like a one-on-one -on -one thing. Like, a lot of the times it was just me in the booth, and – it, like I said, it's just, it's so intimate and you can really look ugly and not care. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it was an amazing experience. Like I would love to do it again. Oh my gosh. If they do like a, like another thing with Rachel Amber, like, oh my God, I want to be it. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I've heard similar things from other people who, you know, like in their first endeavor with voice acting and it's just it's really cool like i like that uh the idea of it and i like the idea of not having that visual component to you know give you added pressure or whatever you can kind of just like you know because you can like express yourself a lot more without having to worry about what shows on like up on camera you can like flail your arms around or i guess hopefully you can do that i don't i don't know what actually the oh i definitely that. did that <laughs> nice <laughs> i was like dancing oh, yeah. in the booth but nobody knew <laughs> <laughs> it's some uh, behind the scenes footage that's really cool mm, yeah thank you yeah um i kind of like i want to go into voice acting but obviously like i'm training as an actor as well so i can dabble in a bit of both uh but yeah, so obviously I don't have any experience with voice acting. I've done short films and stuff, but I'm new to this thing. Um, so it's, but yeah, it's kind of, it's really cool to hear, like, your story from, like, your first time voice acting, because, like, a lot of other people who I've watched in videos, in interviews and stuff like that, and people have come onto the podcast where I've watched them, um, they've, like, had lots of experience with it, so it's not been, like, a crazy, overwhelming new thing, but... Yeah, so that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The uh, the great thing too about about the podcast is uh, we don't we don't do the video, uh, so. Good thing the, you should the see the comfort, me right now. <laughs> Unless we we had, absolutely uh, have to. I usually uh, lots of times uh, we'll just like be wearing pajamas, mm -hmm. you know, and like a robe, and because. Uh, I stay up late Friday nights and then I wake up like an hour before we do the podcast. Uh, but, uh, we had, we had one guest on and uh, he was on webcam and uh, he wanted to like stay on webcam and he's asking like why none of us, none of us were. And I was like, okay, well I have to go get my webcam. And uh, I had it right beside of me, but I, I needed to go put on like proper clothes and not clothes. Yeah. Just pajamas. So I was like, oh yeah, I gotta go find my webcam. Give me a minute. <laughs> That's like if you guys wanted to do the webcam right now, I would have to take a five and just change and you know because <laughs> I'm sitting on my bed in my PJs with my hair up, no makeup. So I mean, if I want to scare the people who are watching this, then we can do that. <laughs> Uh, here, here at Blackwell Podcast, we strive to uh, to get to know the real, <laughs> the real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's good. I like that. <laughs> and we were wondering if you have like any uh, good stories from your time working on the game. Uh, you know. 
I have to pick one because there are a lot. Um, <clears throat> really, every single day was something that I'd want to go home and, and tell my parents about. Because, like I said, I just moved out, so I've been living with my parents. I just turned 19 also, October 1st. Woo, Libras. Oh, happy um, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so, like, every single day it was just an experience of a lifetime. Like, I wish I could go back and relive those moments. Um, I mean, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but, uh, when me and Rihanna, the first, uh, time that we were working together, my first impression was of her was she loved her carrots. She, like, <laughs> stole all the carrots from Crafty, and she just was, like, a little bunny. It was the, the cutest thing ever. She was adorable, and, like, I don't know, just everyone was so nice. Um, I guess really the story that I would want to tell was one I already told you guys about me not knowing what I was doing in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then actually the, the rap, the rap party that we had after we had finished filming everything, we went to mini golf and that was the most fun I've ever had in mini golf before. Cause I get so, I'm so competitive and I suck at mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get very agitated because I can't like I can't play it but then that one day with everybody I was on fire you guys I don't think you realize it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> and just like we were making we were cracking so many jokes and like we had like two different games going on it was one the mini golf which we all sucked at but at the same time we all rocked at and then two how many jokes can you make about mini golf in the mini golf game and we had points for that, too. <laughs> it was just, I don't know. Everyone became a family. And that's that's really my biggest story is that I I miss those guys. I want to see them. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that is that is really awesome. <laughs> I think uh, I think having, like, a sense of camaraderie can make work a lot better. Mm-hmm. Even, if, even if it's, like, something that you are passionate about. Like, just having having good people to do it with makes it a lot better. Exactly. Definitely got to say that about this team, though. Aw. True that. <laughs> because I remember there was... I think it was one time me and Joey were staying up rather late because we were just waiting on some responses or anything, and we decided just to play Uno, and we were, like, losing our minds. <laughs> 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 because we were just... We were both like anxious um like on like how the podcast was doing and everything and we were just like we were uh, we were just so out of it it was it was like it's, it was so funny the uh <laughs> the whole stint we spent just looking at shrek photos yeah <laughs> some some somehow was, was us getting prepared for, for the podcast but <laughs> that'll do donkey that'll do <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we should oh, we should have had to do the, the intro of Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> yes, let's just restart this entire thing. I'll say all my stories again, but we'll put the Shrek in the beginning. Just <laughs> <laughs> your stories as Shrek. You know? Yes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Shrek I'll go is my back and forth like between strange character. Yes, we'll, we'll just have to put him in there. <laughs> I'll just do this entire interview with, like, different voices from Shrek. I'll do, like, Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, Lord yes. Farquaad. <laughs> Prince Charming. Yes. Fairy Godmother. All the good ones. <laughs> well, nobody so just the rest of the questions, then, and, and do this? <laughs> yeah, it's the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> Here at Blackwell Podcast, where we love Life is Strange almost as much as we love Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so for our next question which we already kind of touched on um earlier but uh we wanted to know if there was anything you already knew about life is strange before uh you were you had gotten the part um which you said you kind of didn't you hadn't really heard about it before yeah um yeah i mean i guess i can just reiterate what i said um yeah i didn't i didn't really know anything about life is strange did you 
did you like look into it all once you once you learned like what the part was that it was like a sequel or a prequel rather but oh, that it was yeah, yeah, yeah. connected to something else yeah i i played all of the games and whatnot after i found out <laughs> what i got myself into <laughs> and um, <laughs> It was actually, because like, like I said, it was all under code names, like even the names of the characters were changed, and so I was auditioning for like, I think it was like Rebecca, and the other character was like, I don't know, I don't remember the other name, but like, um, <laughs> and then like the code name for it was like I said, Mike, <laughs> which wasn't actually good, <laughs> but um, so like I really did not know about any of this, they did a, such a superb job on keeping it under wraps and then it was actually Rihanna who told me what I was doing like on the first day of filming she was like do you not know what this is I was like uh it's Mike and she was like no. <laughs> <laughs> she was like no dude this is life is strange and I was like what and then she showed me everything and then I just got so obsessed with it I went home I started like reading all of like the Rachel Amber like uh, breakdowns and like how tall she is, color of her eyes, like who she is, what happened to her, and then I played the game, and then I was like, oh my god, Rachel! <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, so I now I'm just oh my god, I'm gonna be following this thing till the day I die if they keep doing stuff. Yeah. Oh, us too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, among friends. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, I guess I kind of jumped the gun asking that asking that early, so I apologize. It's not okay. Don't ever do that again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one strike you get. <laughs> Damn it! This was your last chance. <laughs> you are fired. <laughs> when you uh, when you were describing like how you felt when you first saw Rachel, like I thought Sean was talking for a second because it sounded exactly like something she would say. <laughs> See, we have so much in common. <laughs> Again, we just meant to be with BFFs. The truth is coming out. Gosh, <laughs> where are you from? I'm gonna like fly to. You. Are you from the UK? Yeah. I'm gonna take a trip. I'm gonna I'll find come, you. I'll come to LA. It's much better where I, than where I am. What? No, I love I love the UK. I've been there a few times, and it's amazing. It's beautiful. You come here, it's like a like the concrete jungle that's basically what it is <laughs> True. i've never been to la though so oh okay well then yeah come out i'll show you around <laughs> i've got oh god i've got party in the usa stuck in my head like <laughs> hop, off the, hop off the plane in lax like that's <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just curse on the rest of us? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you realize I'm like a walking radio. Now that you just put that in my head, I'm going to piss off about five people today. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the contagion. Why, why would they be pissed off? That's like a classic jam. Because I only have Everyone like loves one it. specific part of it, and I will only be singing that one specific part, and then they're going to be singing that one specific part, and then all of us are just going to get like, it's going to be like High School Musical, where like one person starts, and then like everybody comes comes in, oh, and then they're all just going to get pissed off and leave, and then I'm going to have no friends left. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also feel like it's like one of those things where if you live in a, like, if a location is mentioned in a song and you live there, you're going to be like, especially like critical of that, like, oh yeah, good one. <laughs> like I live in, like I live in Reno, Nevada, and like everybody's always just like a shout a man in Reno, and I'm just like, yep, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, I've uh, heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> a, a back in the day, a P.D. Pablo song, uh, and this is I don't know that anyone would would know this, but if you know it, uh, it's it. He says, North Carolina, come on and raise up take your shirt off, twist it around your head, swing it like a helicopter. And <laughs> because I'm in North Carolina, that, of course, was like, it was like, you know, our call of arms. Like, yeah, I was like, why? Like, why do you care so much? Like, just because we're, our state is being mentioned? Like, please stop this. <laughs> Everybody's whipping That's their shirts great. around above their heads. <laughs> they don't have any fun songs about where I'm from. So You should write one. Yeah. <laughs> Change the yeah, right one. Be the change you want to be, Sean. Uh, that will be the opening. That will be the opening lyrics of the song. Be the change you want to be. <laughs> wow, that, that song's real deep. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I just need to change. 
my course. I'm only in my first term. It's not too late. It's been summary. Yes. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen? Have you guys ever seen um, American Horror Story? The yeah. newest one. Okay, no. you know the ice cream truck with the clowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's an ice cream truck that like goes around our block and it scares the living crap out of me. Like I lock all the doors, I close all the windows. <laughs> I'm like, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just heard it, so that's what popped up in my head. Oh, that reminded me of the story when I think it, Joey. The ice cream truck for you, right? Yeah, my old apartment complex had this ice cream truck that would, like, go around at, like, 9 o'clock at night. Oh, oh no. And it was just like, <laughs> that's not okay, man. That's, like... <laughs> that's just creepy. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who's driving the truck is just, like, <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like, laughing his butt off in the car. That'd be so funny. I would do that if I was an ice cream truck driver. I would just creep people out. Like, I'd play the music and then just, like, stop it and, like, stop the car and then start it again. And just, like, roll down, like, two miles an hour. <laughs> I'd buy, like, a clown, like, mask. Oh, my God. I'm demented. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are the thoughts <laughs> in my head. Kylie Brown. You have to, uh, yeah, terrifying I children sure. everywhere she goes. <laughs> Start a fun to get a nice ice cream truck. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, how would, how would, uh, how would you describe character at Rachel Amber? I, she is a chameleon, is the best I can describe her. <laughs> she is such a force to be reckoned with. I, like, she can go up to any, like, you know how there's cliques in high school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, she can go up to any clique and just feel at home. Like, she goes up to the, like, band group. And she can just start talking instruments. She can go up to the drama group, of course, and just be at home, of course, because she is, and go up to the sports group and just start talking sports. Like, I just, I feel, I feel like she's just one person who everyone likes, and she's just amazing, and I, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I just, she's a complicated character. There's, there's a sensitivity to her, and nobody really knows about that because she puts on such a a front and she's always like the happy talented smart girl in arcadia bay and nobody really knows except for chloe down the road that there's there's stuff that hurts her and there's stuff that makes her vulnerable she doesn't i feel like rachel doesn't even know sometimes like what she wants even though everybody thinks she has like her entire life planned out in front of her she's just she's a very amazing and complex character so much fun to to portray and to learn about her. Mm. And uh, that's a that's an awesome awesome breakdown. I think uh, I think that's what we're all like kind of hoping to see is the uh, the woman behind the mystery. <laughs> hey, <Ron. laughs> okay, so the next question is. Um, kind of a nice little light question. What do you consider your spirit animal to be? (laughs) 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 I'm going to have to say a horse. I know that's so weird and random, but a horse. Just because, number one, I always grew up with horses. My mom was going to be an Olympic um, horse competitor. She was doing, like, English writing. I mean, she loved Western, too, but it was mostly English. So I grew up with horses on the property. I started riding horses when I was, I don't know how old. Um, I don't know, I've just always loved horses. They, I always draw horses. It's like the only thing I can draw really well. It started off as like stick figure horses that I thought were like super cool and that should be hung up on the fridge. And now they're, <laughs> they actually look like horses. <laughs> Um, still but they're still hung up just, on the fridge though. They are. They really are. <laughs> <laughs> Long other uh, drawing that I drew of Elsa from Frozen. I drew her. Because I love drawing, like, cartoons and whatnot. That's, like, my favorite thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's my hobby. You guys want to know that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, seriously, though, like, I think horses are my are my spirit animal. They're, they're very strong. They're loving. They're beautiful. They're, I don't know, they're just, they're always there for you, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
I don't know why I, I always make movie references, so I mean, just just know that. But like you know, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know how Aragorn uh, woke up on the on the beach, and then his horse was like nuzzling him, and then like bent down. Oh yeah. Him up. That. Yes. That, that's like that is the ultimate love, and like he, the horse was there for him <laughs> since his life. Like, ugh. I don't know. <laughs> that was like my best. <laughs> that was my best reference. <laughs> This is like the opposite of everything you said about a horse, but when I was a child, a horse once almost killed me. (laughs) But I still really love horses, so it's okay. Like, that didn't deter me. I had had a massive, like, horseshoe-shaped bruise on my back for a long time. It was very traumatizing because I was, like, six. I was living in Germany. I had no idea what was going on. So so whenever I think of horses, I just have, like that deep repressed memory <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, horses like... are very caring and loyal just don't piss them off exactly <laughs> don't walk don't walk behind them <laughs> I don't know what I did I have no idea what I did but I did something <laughs> I have a story like that but it, it's not regarding horses like I used to compete with ice skating and um I don't know if you guys know Michelle Kwan she's an Olympic ice skater um uh, I'm familiar with the name yeah she she grew up in my hometown. She went to RIM, which is the high school I went to. So uh, there was an ice skating rink up there, and, like, I would compete with ice skating all the time before I got into, like, soccer and whatnot. But um, there was a time that I was trying to perfect a spin, and I fell, and this uh, this dad and his daughter were ice skating, and he was going backwards. He had, like, hockey skates on. He was skating backwards, and I was on the ice because um, I had just fallen, and he, like, fell on me and like sliced my face oh jeez. yeah i thought it was like the end of the world because i was like maybe four or five (laughs) but um it it wasn't that bad but yeah i had like an ice uh, a hockey cut across my face yeah that that was my story (laughs) i don't know the point (laughs) to it but (laughs) did you um did you become a batman villain (laughs) <laughs> oh, I did. I put on the voice and everything, and, like, I was in my bed watching movies because it was, like, one of those things where my mom was, like, always bringing me dinner because, like, or, like, any food because I was, like, I don't know, broken. So I'm, like, <laughs> sitting in my room. I would call her up on the phone and be, like, Mother, can I have chicken noodle soup? <laughs> and then <take> it up. <laughs> That's me even when I'm not ill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but, like, back to the horse thing, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've ever, like, listened to horses when they run. There was this time I was visiting my friend up in Montana, and she had, like, I think 60 acres and, like, six or seven horses. There was this one horse who was just huge. Like, if, or I guess, like, a Clydesdale. If you ever, like, listen to a Clydesdale just run, it's such mm-hmm. a deep hoof, like, Sound, it's just so deep and like amazing, and it like, ugh, ugh, I just ugh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, honestly, about the extent of my horse knowledge it comes from uh, video games because I'm a piece of crap nerd, but like <laughs> Red Dead Redemption and like Legend of Zelda with the pony yeah. and all that. Like, Pona. it's like, yeah, I love horses too. Uh, I had three, and um. They're in they're in video games, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're real to you. That's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> they'll never die and they'll never leave me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, yeah. Um. Just uh, going back to um, <clears throat> acting. Um. <laughs> what would you um? What <laughs> What would you say to uh, those who aspire to become actors, um, especially those who have not seen Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first step, is to watch that's Aragon. A, that's the first step. Yeah. Watch a movie about magic and dragons, and you'll, you're, good. you're good for life. <laughs> um, Find your own. <laughs> I've had people ask me that, and I think that is such a, a good question, just because, I mean, for, I, can't, I can't talk for all actors, because... You know, they might have different things, but for me, it's it's really just patience, patience, determination, passion. You need to have all those things to persevere through this because it's Hollywood is such a ugh, 
they're great, you know, but sometimes it can really get you down. Um, you could not get a role because you're too tall, too short, too skinny, too fat. You got blonde hair instead of brown. The director's niece would be perfect for the role and nobody else would get it because the niece will get it, you know? So it's like, and you just can't take anything like that personally. I, I, I learned that the hard way because, I mean, I've been acting for about four years now and really these past two years have been um, where it's been kind of building momentum. But I just, the first two years, I took everything personally. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> it was just bad. And I, I slowly learned that it's like, I, my acting coach told me this, um, don't take criticism personally and don't take compliments personally. And that's actually really helped because, like, you, then you won't really, you that kind of, um, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know. You, you just, you won't strive for people to like you. It's just kind of, you focus mm -hmm. on your art and whatever roles you fit, you fit. And then you just make the best. And that's when you kind of grow your career. And if you focus on the negatives, I mean, you, you take the, take the criticism to where you can work on it. If it's like a, like a true thing, like, uh, maybe you do something with your hand when you act or something like that. And then you can like watch videos of you acting and then start working on that and start, you know, um, working on your acting, but then also don't take compliments personally because that'll just build your ego. And then you always want compliments and whenever you get sure. so that, that's kind of what I, so, I mean, it's, yeah, just back to that. My, my, um, my advice to aspire just if you love it, keep doing it, man. Just keep striving for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Yeah, that's yeah. um, that's really good and like interesting advice actually. Like, cause everybody said like, I feel like a lot of people would say, well, you know, don't take criticism personally. It's nothing against you. It's just, you know, you gotta learn and develop. But I've never heard the flip side of that. Like, don't take compliments personally. But I think that is important, and it's really cool. It's like focus on your craft. Don't don't focus on the emotional aspect or how it affects you. While that is important, it's it's more about like if this is what you want to do, then this this is how you get better. So I think that, that's that's good. Yeah, so that's my advice. And it took me a while to kind of understand what my acting coach said because I I fought that a lot. Cause I'm like I love compliments. Like that's <laughs> how I feel. So because <laughs> feel good about myself and then it, I, it finally clicked one day and I was like that helps me a lot and it really did because now it's just like I'm focusing so much on my art and it's like just take each day at a time and don't focus on the outcome like if you focus on just oh I'm gonna become famous I mean you're going up a ladder and if you're looking at the top of the ladder you're gonna get tired out real fast if you just yeah. take one step at a time, it's you enjoy every moment and you learn from every moment and you're just you're learning and you never stop learning, by the way. Like I don't like it when people say like, Oh, I'm I'm an A lister, I don't need to go to class or anything, I'm done learning. It's like, no, you're you're learning every day. You have life experiences and whatnot and and I that's just what I believe. Is just keep going to class, keep keep pushing through, keep climbing that ladder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right on. That's uh, that's really, really good advice. I think uh, I think it also like can play through to a lot of other things too. It's just uh, mm. especially with like regarding art, you know, just focus on the art and not so much the who you like, the artist, but more the the art. So that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that's really relevant just because uh, I know I've like talked about how I'm on the start of this course. It's just relevant to what you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but like, because uh, uh, I'm obviously new to the course, I don't, have, I don't really have any friends there yet. But I've trained at, in acting like my whole life. Uh, but now I'm like at this new level. And uh, people were talking about what they kind of want to get into. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I really like video games and I'd like to do voice acting and that kind of thing. And, like, someone on my course, like, blatantly said something to my face that was quite disrespectful and, like, uh, just, like, kind of shunning me for wanting to do something that they wouldn't want to do. And it really bothered me for the first day. I was like, how dare they? Like, that's what I want to do. That's my own thing. And I was like, 
you know what? Everyone's got their own their own differences. Everyone's got their own choice. People have different styles. I was like, I'm just going to do me, be proud of myself, and they can do whatever they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, people, that, people that do that bug me so much. Like, even, mm. when I was in high school, I was a big advocate for uh, anti-bullying. I was actually one of the amb- ambassadors for a... Um, a school safety program and so like I that that kind of a thing just like really bugs me that people do that and like um when they when people I've always been taught like when people take when people take your idea it's because they like it and Mm. when people say something bad about your idea it's because like either they're just dumb (laughs) or (laughs) they or they're scared because you have a really original and amazing idea that you're going to strive for and like just don't yeah don't don't take that personally because I know I I struggled with that a lot when people would say stuff like that to me but like now look at me like when I first started acting people were like oh you're gonna be an actor you live in Lake Arrowhead how are you gonna do that and like you're not talented and now people are like oh my god I'm so proud of you like you're you're going for your dreams and I'm like well yeah thank you like I wasn't gonna let people I wasn't gonna let the few people who told me I can't do it like affect me going for it like a lot of people are going to say you can't do something and that just shouldn't even phase you it's just like mm. if you want to do it go for it you know so yeah mm. just tell that person fuck you <laughs> <laughs> i was very tempted <laughs> but i'm in a professional environment so yes exactly mm. um uh anyway uh I rambled on there a bit, but yes. Uh, Now we're on to questions from the fans. And we have Nicolette, and she said, do you relate to Rachel in any way? I do, actually. (laughs) Like, Rachel, I guess my spirit animal is Rachel, you know. Um, (laughs) For me, when I was in school, I graduated a year ago, so (laughs) last year when I was in school, um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I ugh. I feel like I was kind of a chameleon in school too I was in band for my first two years I played the biggest bass drum and the drum line and I played flute um, and then I started playing you know like the full drum set and whatnot I have a drum set at my house um, and like I got along really well like that was like my geek side and I would fit in really well with, with the with the band members and then I played soccer, so then that was my competitive side and my strong side, and I fit in really well there. And just, I could go to, like, any click and really, you know, click with them. Mm-hmm. And I was, I got straight A's. I was in the AP classes, honor classes, literally through my entire school career. Um, I was never in drama, though, which is weird because I'm an actor. <laughs> but, uh <laughs> I guess that's the only difference, really, between me and Rachel. And a lot of the times, I know with Rachel, she likes to, you know, put on that facade of, I have everything under control. And then when she's intimate with Chloe, you really see her her vulnerable side. And I guess that's kind of how I am. I don't like to show my vulnerable side out outside of my friends. Like, when I'm with other people, I'm very strong and put together. Um, mm-hmm. And then alone with somebody, I really open up and I think that's something I really have in common with with uh Rachel yeah yeah do you uh do you when you get angry do you get smashy do you throw water bottles of things I I create fires you know (laughs) (laughs) you know all those fires that have been happening yeah that's me (laughs) (laughs) my beat (laughs) I should say uh, all of these, uh, of course, like in using the questions, uh, we didn't put it in, but um, I know you said not to take compliments personally, but like everybody is a huge, like that was like the opening to all of their emails was like, I, I love Rachel Amber, she did such a great job. Yeah. Aww. Thank you guys. Yeah, you really yeah. did. Do, you really did do great. It was, uh, it was nice to finally like have voice put to Rachel and... Uh, I think you did a a good job with it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and I've been like, I've been wanting to, well, the next question addresses it, so I'll let Joey take it. But um, yeah, I'm just uh, curious to know the answer behind it. All right. Um, The next question comes from Alexandra. And they ask, 
It's all right. They ask, did you feel apprehensive to take on the role of Rachel Amber, uh, a character that many people had already envisioned with their own traits, voice, and qualities? Well, now that you say that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Alexandra, that's a very good question, actually. Um, Honestly, when I was actually very scared, apprehensive, no. But I I was very, very scared um, once I learned the entire franchise and how big it was. I, like I said, I did, I did a lot of my homework to try and, you know, do the best that I could to bring Rachel to life and have the fans love her as much as I do. And, I, I mean, I'm glad that people like her so much because that means a lot, guys. And, um... <laughs> But yeah, so it was mostly just me being scared, but being scared is a really good thing. Um, at least, I mean, for anything, really. It's like, if you're scared of something, it means you should do it. Unless you're about to jump off a building, then, you know, don't do it. But, um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that's, that's really, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I was just scared, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that was a really good question. Yeah, I I was curious to know because like it's just it seems like it would be extra challenging because you know whereas I, I think everybody in this game did a really phenomenal job with the voice acting, um, mm. you know Rihanna included, and uh, I think it was challenging in a different way for her because she had um, Ashley's performance to sort of base that off of, but I mean you really only had like photos and like you know hearsay of what Rachel was like, so mm. I don't know I just um. I was interested to know what that was like. Yeah, no, I think Chloe, I mean, sorry, Rihanna. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think Rihanna tomato, tomato. Had a really tough job. Yeah, it's made of tomato. She's the same. Person. <laughs> um, I think uh, Rihanna had a really tough or a difficult task because, yeah, she she had to follow Ashley Birch and Chloe's and Chloe's. Um, I don't know what I was going with that, but um. She had to follow up with Ashley Birch, and I think she did a phenomenal job, mm. honestly. And um, but yeah, with me, <laughs> the the whole thing about the uh, um, already had envisioned with character traits, voice, and quality. Me with my voice, I always thought I sounded like a man. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, Birch is gonna sound like a guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm just really happy that I can, you know have the have the fans of Rachel and Life is Strange in general like love Rachel and that's all I can really ask for I tried I tried not to really think about how big this was because I knew that would affect me so I really just I went in and did my job I did the research on Rachel I built a a a character behind her and I I I, you know just went and did my job I don't know (laughs) I'm glad I did it good on a good call yeah do you uh do you now like you know if you go into starbucks tell them that your name is rachel and <laughs> <laughs> yes actually i'm i used to actually do that with uh my dad my dad and i would go into um like starbucks and we'd pick like names like i'd be tom he'd be jerry <laughs> i'd be <laughs> like we would just we would pick the funniest names and like we would never give starbucks our actual names and it was just like a game we'd always play so now that i am Rachel Amber, I do that a lot. (laughs) I don't know if that's bad, but it's just fun. (laughs) Um, So our next question is from Eric, and he wants to know what was your favorite scene in which you voiced Rachel, and why? I think my favorite... I can't pick one. I guess, like, my favorite scene when I was playing the game would be the, the finale. Um, seeing it all put together, but when we filmed this, they were so out of whack. Like, um, the scenes, we didn't... I don't know how to explain that, but... um, <clears throat> They weren't, like, chronological. Right? Yeah. But I guess, really, the scenes that I loved the most were the ones where I was very really intimate with Chloe. It was just mm. so, like, it was such a vulnerable place to be, and I absolutely loved it, and I just... When I watched it, when I played the game and watched the uh, the game kind of take over sometimes and like the scenes, 
those are just my absolute favorite. That's uh that's really cool. That's I think I think hearing that too, like not that there needed to be any more added to it, but I think it adds to uh like the validity of like Rachel and Chloe's relationship and then also like your relationship to the character. Mm. That like so that's that's cool to hear. Yeah. Hey, so um Next question is from Justine, and she would like to know what's your favorite part about voicing Rachel just as a whole? Uh, my favorite thing about voicing Rachel is voicing Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Did you <a> good answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's how I'm going to be answering like the rest of these questions, just <laughs> with the... <laughs> um, <laughs> I think my favorite part about voicing Rachel was like, just bringing her to life, you know, giving her a voice and and discovering different things about her and where she's vulnerable and where she puts up a front and, you know, just, just the different traits about her was so incredible for me to, like I said, discover about her and, and play about her. It's, it's, it's kind of... I guess, like, my real answer is, my first answer is just voicing her. That was my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Justine won't, won't complain about that answer. <laughs> Sorry, Justine! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can give. Well, in the spirit of, a. Uh... Totally embodying Rachel. Uh, Carly asks, do you plan on cosplaying as Rachel anytime in the future? <laughs> okay, so um, I was just <laughs> in Kentucky for a month filming a movie, and um, my birthday was out there. I like, I literally just got back from Kentucky, and then I moved, so I've been really busy. Oh, my God. But um, my mom actually sent me Rachel Amber's earrings in the mail for my birthday. So, no, cool. Oh, cool. I'm staring at them right now, and uh, yeah, you might just you might just have to see. I might be posting some pictures about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> awesome. That is uh, yeah, that is exciting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope we do I hope we do see those soon. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> you shall never know until the day I post it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just for the fans, we don't have inside info on these kind of things. It's, uh, <laughs> we'll see it when you do. <laughs> uh, I'm cosplaying Chloe at a convention in like two weeks, so cosplayer to cosplayer, I'm excited to see it. <laughs> if that happens, if you do oh dress as Rachel. Dude, what if we see each other? I'm going to be so ecstatic. I'm going to run over to you and be like, Chloe! <laughs> <laughs> Um, now we have a question from Cody, and they say, do you think two people can develop romantic feelings in a day? Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plain and simple. Do you ever see, like, a, a hot person across the room, you guys make eye contact, and you immediately fall in love? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of me the first time I saw Chloe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's not real, but, like. Like, like, in my heart, she is. So. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so plain and simple, yes, you can fall in love in one day, okay? Mm. <laughs> I, I have an add-on question here. This is like, uh, do, do you ship Rachel and Chloe? Oh, hell yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have so much in common again. Yeah, oh I don't know God. if you guys are on Tumblr, but, like, on Tumblr, I was, like, I just got a Tumblr. Like, when this thing came out, my friend was like, oh, you need to get a Tumblr. I was like, what is that? So she made one for me. And, like, we were, like, stalking everybody that was talking about Life is Strange. And, like, there was this one person who was, like, um, Price Field Forever or something like that. I forgot. It was, like, this train. It was the train scene with uh, Chloe and Rachel. Yeah. And um, they were, like... Has the train? Her, God, I, ugh, I wish I could remember the wording of it. It was so perfect, and she was like Pricefield, and then I'm like, sorry, babe, the the um, 
the Amber Price field has already left. The Amber Price train has already left. I don't know, something like that. But it was so funny to me. Like, I was dying. <laughs> Is your um, Tumblr public? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can I can I have your Tumblr? Can I follow it? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. I remember what my name is? Sorry, I'm very sarcastic, so... <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I am too. I, I just... You're cooler than me, so... <laughs> um, so my, my Tumblr is just official Kylie Brown. It's just simple. I will follow you. I'll make sure Sweet. to put that in the description. I'm so Arcadia hyphen gay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's this! Okay, um, am I the only one who is still on board the price field train? And I said, the train is left, babe. And then all caps, I was like, Amber Price forever! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, our next question is from Ricardo. And I'm actually curious what you have to say about this as well. Uh, what was it like voicing the scream at the end of episode one? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, my voice is still sore from it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was it was interesting. I didn't think it was going to sound as good as it did. Um, I was in this little booth with a microphone a few inches from my face, and Phil was like, scream. I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, scream. And I was like, okay, I need a little more context than that. And then they showed me um, some of the the graphics for what they were planning on doing. And so it gave me like a little backstory of like why I was screaming and I read the script and it was like, okay, now I, now I understand. But I, for me, Kylie Brown, my scream is very, it's short. <laughs> like it's a short scream, but it's like a high pitched scream, you know? So when he was like, scream, I screamed, and then he's like, okay, I need you to scream a little longer. And I tried screaming longer, but then it wasn't long enough. So then we did it a few times, and then I was like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so finally, like, we got one that I guess that I guess worked, but I hated it. Because, like, my, my scream did, like, that little, like, vibration thing. And it was like, because... I don't know, my scream just kind of gave up halfway through and then was like, oh, I have to scream. And then it came back and then it was like, eh, never mind. And then it went back or like, I don't know. It was it was just really weird to me. And then I watched it on the um, on the video game and it, it actually looked pretty good. I mean, the first time it came up, I was like, oh, God, that's my scream. <laughs> and then I... I watched it again, like, I read some comments about it, like, um, people saying, like, just how, how hurt she was and whatnot, and then I was like, yeah, that's actually really true, and so I watched it again, and I was like, yeah, that's actually, yeah, cool, I like it, <laughs> I actually yeah, like it, good. yeah, but yeah, so, like, there was, there was time, there, like, we did it a few times, my voice was getting kind of hoarse, and, um, and, but I was I was actually getting really frustrated just because I had to scream so much. And he was like, Phil would just be like, um, again. And I'd scream. And then I'd look at him. And he's like, again. And then I'd scream. And then, like, I, th after so many times, I was just like, ah! like, I screamed. And then I was getting really frustrated in the booth. Just not at him, but just, like, at myself. Because I'm like, I'm a girl. I'm supposed to scream. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was... There was real frustration in that scream. Yeah. Well, it's different, like, if you scream just, you know, organically versus, like, no, scream this way. Like, scream differently. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if it makes you feel any better, I jumped. Oh, yay! Like, <laughs> the game, so. <laughs> that makes me happy. I actually teared up in the, in the end. Oh, yeah? Um. Yeah, cause just because, like, seeing it all put together with the music and just, like, the context around it and just, just such, like, I always go back to the vulnerability because I feel like that's such an amazing thing to see is people that are vulnerable and, like, their true self. And 
just the vulnerability vulnerability between Chloe and Rachel, I just thought was so authentic and so real. And it like, even though I already knew what I was saying because I already recorded it, I was like so into it. And like, I was just crying and I was like, why (laughs) something more, something more. (laughs) Do you think, uh, do you think like maybe that frustration kind of almost in a way like lent aid to to like being able to do the final the final product of the scream because uh, like i feel like it, it like in the in the scene you know rachel is she is like she's mad at her dad she's mad at the world she's mad at herself for like i don't know there's like such raw emotion do you think like that actually like getting frustrated kind of at yourself actually helped in a way oh yeah definitely i yeah I really, like I said, I I really connect with Rachel. I really understand her and feel for her. I'm very empathetic towards her. And um, I think understanding the context around the scream and then getting mad at myself in the booth, I think all of that just mixed together. There were so many emotions going through me during that scream that just came out, and I'm glad that it registered with everyone else. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad that it's getting a it's getting a lot of uh, attention. <laughs> like I saw more about my scream than Rachel Amber. <laughs> I was like, oh god, there's so many. There's like, have you guys ever seen the the gif of the um, the, uh, the Grinch in a yoga room, and then he just starts screaming? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> yes. So I had seen that gif before Life is Strange had come out, and then all of a sudden I'm going through Tumblr and I see the part where I kick over the trash can and start screaming and the scream matched perfectly with the Grinch. And uh, I was dying. It was like five in the morning <laughs> because I'd been up all night, just like going through stuff with my friend. And I saw that. And because I like, I was tired and I get really giggly when I'm tired. Oh my God. It made my night. I was crying by the end of it because it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever posted that. Thank you so much for making my night. And I'm still talking about it. And that was like a month ago. <laughs> that's one thing i love about the tumblr uh fan base because the memes in there are just so good like the vines that people make like isn't they're not vines anymore because vine's dead but like in vine format it's just so funny like i stay up like you said i stay up to like 5 a.m and i'm just sat in my like room laughing to myself and my flatmates are probably like what's she doing <laughs> <laughs> It's a quiet room, and then all you hear is a... <laughs> just like sure. someone's laughing. Just like it's haunted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's haunted! Haunted by the ghost of mine. And you just hear, like, the Rachel Amber scream from afar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what did you say your Tumblr account was? Uh, Arcadia-gay. Like, oh Arcadia my God. gay I saw. I was on my Tumblr notification just now, and I saw that you followed me, and I was already following you, girl. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I went to follow you, and then the only thing was unfollow, and I was like, oh my god, I'm already following you. So that's funny. Wow. The more you know, I feel, <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad. Now. <laughs> I didn't know you had Tumblr. I'm just so famous, I can't keep up to date with my followers, you see. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I followed you, well, now, so. Okay. Um, kind of going back, kind of going back to, uh, I guess the emotions and the scream. <laughs> we can go in. <laughs> okay, okay, you guys. Okay, we get it. We get it. You follow each other on Tumblr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> our last question uh, from the fans is from Kedge. And uh, they want to know, did voice and Rachel prove to be an emotional, difficult, difficult task for any scenes? And if so, how did you manage to push through it? Oh, God. I'm going to get really, really sad right now because, um, yeah, it was it was emotionally straining. Just <sighs> a lot of the scenes were there was so many different emotions that you had to emote. And that's another thing, too, is when you voice act rather than on screen. When you're on screen, you can emote something and your face can do something. I don't know how to explain that. Like your body language can say something as well as your words. And mm-hmm. it and it 
you know, comes across the screen as that. But when you're voice acting, you have to put all of these different emotions and whatnot just strictly through your voice. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really difficult, too, just because I've, I'd never done it before. And it was something that I was learning. And I'm number one, I'm glad I could do it. Um, number two, yeah, it was it was very emotional. Um, like I said, I'm going to get really, really sad right now because one of the days that I was filming... Uh, I was in the booth, and um, my dog, um, he was a Samoyed Husky, cutest thing you've ever seen, not a mean bone in his body. His name was Duke, and one day I was in the booth, he passed away, because he had, he had cancer, he had bladder cancer. Oh. Yeah, he, and my parents didn't tell me, because they knew I was on set, and they wanted me to be focused, which I could understand and I came home late that night and the next morning my dad and I were at the the breakfast table and we were just talking laughing you know like what we normally do and so I looked at him and I was like you know just still happy I was like where's Duke and his face just turned so from happy because we were just laughing to just so sullen and serious and I knew that something had happened and that he was gone so like I started crying. I ran upstairs and called my sister because my sister's in the Navy and she's uh, in Virginia right now. And um, so I called her and whatnot. Like then the next time I was in the booth, I had told Phil about it and different scenes. And I told him straight up, I gave him permission. I was like, if you want me to go crying and like sad and whatnot, like just start talking about Duke. And so he did. And there was some scene where I had to get really emotional and he would just like, he's such an amazing voice director, seriously. Like he knows how to get you into the correct emotion mm -hmm. and what, and so, yeah, he, he used Duke and that's one of the things that triggered me so fast was just thinking about this dog that we had rescued off the street and had him for three years. And we're kind of assuming now that he was dumped because they found out he had cancer. And we didn't know that because, you know, we had found him on the side of the road. Right. I mean, yeah. So it was just, it was just, it was very emotional having to relive feelings and, you know, get into that, that mindset. And, but like other days, you know, when we were at like in drama and I'm like calling out Chloe and all that kind of stuff, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. There was a lot of laughs. Like I Something and like everybody behind the uh, show were just cracking up, and it was just so funny to me. So I mean, it was it was a mix, it was an array of feelings, and but yeah, it was very it was an emotional ride, and I think that's why we all connected so well, and that's why we're all really close now, is because we we all went through different emotions together through this entire filming process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry to hear about your dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't want to. I don't want to end an interview on such a sad note. Uh, so we can make it uh, fun again. <laughs> do we do have a big question? Let's go back to Shrek. That, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, knowing knowing that you have played uh, season one of Life is Strange, uh, we have a we have a big question that we've kind of asked a lot of people, uh, and it's Bay or Bay. B A E or B A Y. <laughs> judging you on this answer, this could make a very tough friendship. <laughs> See, oh god, that was such a difficult decision, but I chose B A Y. I'm sorry, guys. I'm. Oh uh, my god. I'm realistic. <laughs> it's it's killed the entire bay with thousands of people, or just you know a lot of people, or one person. Yeah, thank you. It's not that you dislike yeah. Chloe. It's just that you're not going to... Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, so now that... Hmm. Counterpoint, <laughs> though. Arcadia Bay, B-A-Y, killed Rachel, whom you were voice acting in the prequel. Exactly. Is that not... Is that, uh, you know, not that uh, you're not entitled to your opinion, but let me, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you why you should change it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm sorry if I ruined our friendship. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. 
I do have another question though. I, I don't yeah. even know. Am I allowed to ask? I don't know. But oh. do you have an opinion on price field? Or on price field? <sighs> yeah. But I'm my opinion is so biased just because I'm so for Amber Price. <laughs> um, I mean Price Field, they they were cute together, you know? Yeah. But Rachel and Chloe, I mean, they're real. This is when they're like discovering who they are and they're discovering who they are together. And I think that's a huge thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like them both, so. Yeah, there was, <laughs> was like Amber Pricefield. I was like, okay, that could work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, it's it's tough to choose. Yeah, it is because uh, like you said, I mean, you you put it you put it well, and it's like Chloe and Rachel are kind of like discovering who they are together. You know, and then uh, in season one, you know, Chloe kind of already has has a pretty strong grasp grasp on who she is and so even though there's like very poignant bonding between chloe and max it's it's not it, it's a different context and not quite the same as mm. as uh rachel and chloe it's really nice yeah. to see the difference though in those two relationships mm-hmm. it's really interesting yeah because i feel like rachel and max are just so two very different people Holy but i love i love them both so much so yeah, they're all different in their in their different ways. And... Do you think Do you think uh, Rachel and Max would be friends, like close friends? Because we know Rachel could like fit in with anyone, but do you think they would uh they would click? I I think so. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I mean Chloe's friends with Max, and. Yeah, Rachel can really fit with anybody, but it's like a matter of like this Rachel um, trust. Did I say Chloe fits in with anybody? I think you said Rachel. Yeah. Okay, good. So. <laughs> I was like thinking about what I was saying. I was like, oh, that's not what I was saying. But I'll find um, that on the YouTube video later. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie messed up. Oh no. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, I, like Rachel, I feel like it's a matter of like, will she trust Max? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think she would if she saw like the real Max and how caring she is and whatnot. Yeah. I have this like nice idea of my head in my head. Uh, this is like what I'd want to see, but I'll, I'll never have it. But they'd just be like a really nice little girl gang, and they just hang out and go to games yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, everything's fine. <laughs> And they go to the beach. Yes. It's just fun. <laughs> nothing sad. Everything is beautiful nothing and nothing sad. hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's great. Well, cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to answer all these questions yeah. for us and regale us with your enchanting stories. I'm trying to pull out. I'm trying to use my most poetic <laughs> way of thanking you. <laughs> Just quote um, Shrek would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you uh, you agreed to come to our swamp. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> They're making a new Shrek movie, aren't they? I think we need 20, a 2019 cameo. Oh my gosh. Who's gonna voice Donkey? It has to be the same voices. Come on. I presume so. Okay, good. Because yeah. like okay. to me, what else is Eddie Murphy <laughs> in these days? Exactly. To me, Donkey is or Eddie Murphy is Donkey. Like that's just. If it's not Eddie Murphy, <laughs> it has to be Kylie Brown. I'm not gonna say <gasps> yes! anything else. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want it to be Eddie Murphy. I want it to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week for our Shrek voiceover session. Can I yes. be you Farquaad? Okay. <laughs> Lord Farquaad. Yes. Oh, cool. Be cool. Lord Farquaad. um so thank you also everyone who sent in questions uh we had a lot Mm -hmm. um and we couldn't use all of them unfortunately but uh thanks again for for submitting and uh i hope i hope you enjoyed your time here not to put you on the spot if you didn't (laughs) i hated every single second of it all my laughs were fake (laughs) (laughs) I was getting kind of worried. 
<laughs> no, actually, time flew by, like, really fast. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it did. Yeah, I'd always, I'd always love to come back. I'm gonna force myself on here. I'm just gonna Skype you guys every night. <laughs> <laughs> just so happens, uh, we are doing an extra live stream, uh, which is a 24-hour stream for charity. Uh, last year we did it and we raised uh, 32, 98, 90, 92. 32, 92 uh, for uh, Duke Children's Hospital here in North Carolina. Uh, so we would absolutely love to have you back with us when we do that. Oh my god, absolutely. You don't have to stick around for all 24 hours. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just might hear me snoring, that's okay. <laughs> it was, but, uh... I wasn't there for the entire 24 hours last year, but apparently things got really crazy during, like, the, the final stretch of it with Joey. <laughs> oh my god. I Remember bought... when I said this... when I get tired, I get really loopy and, like, laughy? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys could just say, okay, and I'd probably start bawling my eyes out laughing <laughs> <laughs> if I stayed for the full 24. <laughs> Kylie, have you, um, have you uh, played Jackbox games? Have I played, sorry, what? Uh, Jackbox, it's like an assortment of games um, that I think we're going to be playing, right? Like, did we confirm that? Uh, not yet, no. But maybe. Okay, well, anyway. Well, we just did, right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're really fun. There's, there's one called Quiplash where you just write the most ridiculous things you possibly can and people vote on which is the best answer. And <gasps> I just played awesome. that last night! Oh, you oh, did? I literally just played that! Oh my god, that's like my new favorite game! It was so much fun! If you guys play that, oh my god, please put me on there for that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so funny. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll let you know, uh, like, time slots. It's going to be November 25th and running until the 26th, but uh, we'll let you know. We'll get with you and uh, make this a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um... We won't we won't keep you here any longer. I uh, know you hated it. I know you're uh, <laughs> you're so ready to get out of here. Oh my and god! Yeah. Stop talking. So ready to <laughs> get out of our swamp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, but again, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. This was a blast. It was fun. Yeah. I apologize for all my stories. <laughs> oh, I like them. I think no, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that was the best part. Yeah. Yay. Story time <laughs> with Kylie. Yes. <laughs> In my swamp. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's perfect? What? So this morning I actually did make waffles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I truly. Well, they were the frozen ones, but you know, it doesn't count, right? <laughs> you and your your weirdly prophetic breakfast. Yes. <laughs> Early swapping stories. Maybe not manly. But... Um, and thank you everyone for uh, listening. Mm-hmm. Listening to us and. Uh, Kylie, don't be a stranger. Like I said, we'll uh, we'll uh, get with you about November, having you on. Okay. Yeah, that'll be perfect. And yeah, thanks guys for listening in on this. This has been fun. I hope I don't bore you. And if I do, then uh, just keep listening because I'm actually quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if you bored our listeners, then. How do we even have listeners? Because we are not <laughs> as entertaining as, yeah. as you. So. Wait, you just put no, the Shrek in the title? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Come that on. will keep people listening. Yes. Hey, now. You're an all-star. <laughs> <laughs> when you said, hey, now, I thought of uh, the Lizzie McGuire movie. You know, the, the hey, now. Oh, hey, now. oh yeah. Something. Something. Hey, now. <laughs> Friendship has been reestablished. I mean, no, I totally haven't seen that movie. (laughs) (laughs) This has been fun. Fun time. It was fun, yeah. So that was Kylie Brown, everybody. What what an amazing, (laughs) enjoyable person to talk to. Yeah. 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 Jeez.
yeah, it was a lot. It was really cool. She was uh, she was really nice. She was really fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's get into some housekeeping, and then, well, we can call it an episode. Yeah. So next week we have Katie Benz, the voice of Steph, um, who's going to be on the show with us. We're set, yeah. setting questions until Tuesday, mm -hmm. so keep sending those in. And we'll tweet about it. We'll do another like last call for it. But uh, if you haven't already, make sure you get this in. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you subject line it with questions for Katie. Yep. Um, on the 4th of November, we have Kiki's Cosplay Service, who's going to be joining us to talk about um, their experience with the game and their amazing Max Cosplay. So mm -hmm. that'll be that. And Let's make then, sure you get questions in for those, too, yep. for her. I think we said the 29th was the deadline. Uh, it would be the 31st. Okay, so the 31st, right. Um... So let's talk about a new announcement that we have. We've been making announcements every week. Oh, we're busy. Yeah. So we have a new guest on the 11th of November. And mm -hmm. it's none other than Rihanna DeVries, the voice of Chloe in Before the Storm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's very exciting. I'm excited. I'm nervous as heck, as most episodes that we do. I'm just a mess. <laughs> I I I I don't I don't know how to function. I'm losing it. So um, we're going to be accepting questions until the seventh for Rihanna, but we're not going to start them yet. We're just announcing. Right. So start thinking of them, uh, but wait a little bit before sending them in. Yeah. Uh, and we'll let you know. We'll let you know when we're starting to get those rolling in. Uh, yeah. But like, like. Like Jamie said, we are busy. We are. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a break the weekend of the 28th, uh, but then 4th and 11th, and then um, the 25th is when we're doing Extra Life, as we mentioned. Um, and we kind of we kind of talked about some of the stuff that we'll be looking to do for Extra Life. Um, and yeah, Kylie will be joining us. Hopefully, yeah. So um, yeah, with that. We want to say thank you to all our patrons for helping us support the show. Um, mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. And um, all the money will be donated to the Travel Project uh, for the first three months. Um, of <laughs> After paying for all of expenses, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. And with that said, we will see everybody next week with our interview with the voices to have Katie Benz. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks for listening. Later, guys. <laughs>